Hello and welcome to another episode of If This Car Could Talk. My name's Dana. This week's feature truck belongs to a couple whose name my YouTube followers will probably recognize, John and Candace Leap, who also hold the title to that awesome 1977 Dodge Aspen RT we featured a few weeks ago. The main difference is that this 1978 Ford F100 has been in the Leap family since it was bought new in 1978 by John's father. To date, this indestructible Ford truck has logged nearly 600,000 miles, and the entire drivetrain remains original and has never had a need for anything more than routine maintenance. Nothing's been rebuilt or overhauled except for the seat, although components like a starter, alternator, and radiator have been replaced. This F100 exemplifies the built Ford Tough advertising slogan that Ford used first beginning in 1978. Appropriate, right? Well, if you're a fan of vintage trucks and especially old Fords, you'll love this week's feature. So sit back and enjoy seeing the sixth generation F-Series pickup in its mostly unaltered state. Yes, even the paint is original on this one. I'll let John tell you about the history of his one family owned Effie. My name is John Leap. I was born and raised in Riverside, Arizona, and I own a 1978 Ford F100 Ranger, which was my mom and dad's first brand new vehicle that they ever owned. And um, they drove the car, the truck for, the truck has 592,000 miles on it. It's really close to 600,000 miles, all original. The, ridge, the motor's never been opened up, the rear end's never been opened, and their transmission has never been opened. It has been driven hard. Uh, my dad drove it and drove it and drove it, and uh, my dad got hurt on, uh, in the mines, and the truck sit for about three years, and I went up and I got the truck, and I put tires on it, brakes, and interior, because the interior was completely dry rotted. Um, this original seat, I just had it re reupholstered, and the floorboard was completely cracked and broken because it was just the old vinyl floor mats. And I put carpet in it, and I put a headliner because the headliner was falling down on your head as you're driving. And but everything else is completely original on the truck. Uh, as of about eight years ago, before I put new tires on the truck, the original bias ply spare was still sitting in the back of the truck uh, on the spare tire. So. It is, again, completely original. The only thing that I've done on the motor is a starter, an alternator, and the radiator. Because the truck, the radiator was completely clogged up and the truck would get hot as soon as you started it. And now you can drive that truck anywhere because there's a four core radiator in there. And it come with a 351 modified. And um, again, that truck can go anywhere. It just, it was bought original in Kearney, Arizona from a dealer named Phillips Ford. It was just a small corner dealer that he probably had about 20 vehicles on his lot. And my dad, for some reason, wanted a tangerine orange Ford truck. And he got it and brought it home. And it came originally with a camper on it, a little camper shell. And when I went up and got the truck, the camper shell was falling in on the top it just sun baked so much that it was almost falling off the truck so I got rid of that and uh, put a cover on I mean put a, uh, a bed liner in the back of the truck just to protect the the back of the truck because it was where the camper rubbed on it for so many years it uh, rubbed it down to bare metal and so I just did that on the truck just to, again to protect it but I did very little to the truck to keep it original as possible in my dad's memory. We drove it to Route 66 and it was the most comfortable ride I've ever been in. I've taken my Dodge Aspen uh, about six times and it was very uncomfortable, very hard to drive in, but this truck, it just cruised like a Cadillac on the road. It just, it, you can't go over 65 in it, but you can definitely cruise in it, that's for sure. So the radio, uh, again the dash, everything was completely original, but I came home one day and someone broke into the truck and the doors were wide open and there's not much is still in there. Again, it's just a basic interior, but someone took the AM radio out of the dash. For some odd reason, somebody had stole the original radio out of the truck. I They broke the dash all out of it, but I put the dash back together and I fixed it up to where you can't tell that uh, it's broken. Someone, I guess, had a fascination with the old Ford AM radio. 
that they needed to have. And um, there's one dent in the cab of the truck, a very, very small dent in the back. That's where my uh, dad was sick. My mom used to, we used to live on a hill and we had a gate. And so my mom was driving. She went and stopped to open up the gate. She thought she put the car, the truck in neutral, I mean in park, and she put it in uh, reverse instead. As soon as she stepped out of the truck to go open the gate, the truck took off down the hill backwards with my dad sitting inside of it and went down about a hundred foot hill, went across the road and went down an embankment and landed on my neighbor's porch and knocked his porch down and didn't do any damage to the truck except the camper slid back a little bit and hit the cab but it tore his porch off the house and me and my brother had to go back and replace his fence and build his porch back and luckily my dad wasn't hurt my mom wasn't hurt but um, the truck could have definitely ran her over but that's the only dent that's in the truck uh, um, I can remember driving in a hailstorm when I was about 10 my dad was driving coming out of Oklahoma and the hill was hitting and we were out trying to outrun a tornado because tornadoes were supposed to be in the area and I was beating on a drum sitting in the middle of the seat and beating on a drum, beating on a drum and my dad was stressed out because it was pouring down rain, hailing on, hitting the truck, broke the windshield out of the truck and he was more and more stressed and I kept beating on the drum. He rolled the window down, took the drum out of my hand and threw it out the window and left me with the little baton and he told me to quit beating that damn drum and roll the window back up and that's one of the stories I can remember my dad doing with the truck. Future plans is I'm gonna give it to our daughter. Um, she's a big, she likes Fords and so um, she is really in love with the truck so once I pass away or once I get a little bit older and you know don't have the room to put the vehicles I'm gonna give it to her and she promised me that she's gonna keep it the way it is because I promised my dad I'd keep it the way it is. I, he doesn't want any of the hot rod stuff done to it or lowered or anything like that. He wanted to just keep it just like it was. And so again, I promised my dad I would do that. So that's the way it's gonna stay. As long as I live, it's gonna stay that way. For for years, my when my mom and dad, uh, when I was a kid, my mom and dad had a truck. They would throw all the kids in the back of the truck and in the camper shell. And so you're talking six or seven kids in the 80s sitting in the back of the truck, going through traffic, going through the hills, no seat belts, no nothing. And we would go, because we lived out in the middle of nowhere, so we would go two hours down to Phoenix to go grocery shopping. And so my dad would take kids with us, whoever wanted to go, he just said, let's get in the truck and let's go. And we'd be in the back of that truck, and how dangerous that was back then, but we didn't know. We didn't care, we didn't know. We were just riding the back of the truck, and we thought it was cool, open the windows. No matter how hot it was, you slide the windows open at the camper, and you were cool. And we would take tools, and my dad had in a toolbox, and we'd use them as imaginary guns, and we'd shoot cars as they drove by with imaginary guns. And uh, it's just one of the stories that we had with that truck. It just, uh, that truck's been around, and this is one of the things that I want my grandkids to be able to ride in the back of the truck, you know, go down a dirt road someday and take them in the back of the truck. Isn't that just amazing? That story with that beautiful old truck kind of gakes my heart to skip a beat. I hope it did yours too. So stay tuned for this week. On Thursday, there'll be a lot more coming about this truck and the history of the F100. There'll be a lot to learn and some even greater trucks to look at. 
I'd like to thank my new friends, John and Candace, the owners of this week's feature truck, for taking the time to show all of my YouTube friends their Survivor 78 Ford F100. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up and hit that free subscribe button so you never miss my weekly videos. And I also welcome your comments. If you have a vehicle with a fascinating story that you'd like to have showcased here, why don't you email me at ifthiscarcouldtalk at gmail.com. Maybe you'll see it here and share your story with the world. Until next time.